Typically, uh, a major work like this will start about a year in advance, and uh, I will do what I can to check on research, find out other performances in this country and around the world, whether or not Franz has actually performed the work elsewhere. One of the bits of research that we do in advance is to, is to do some study and to see who has been involved and what sources they may have cited and uh, whether or not we, in fact, are going to incorporate that into, into our performance. Um, most of that detail is, especially a work like this, where there's a lot of scholarship involved. This is a fairly new edition that came out in 2010. We're probably one of the first maybe five or six uh, orchestras, companies in the world that has done this, this edition. And, but it's excellent. And the, the detail as to how they got to their decisions is, is phenomenal and fascinating. One thing I love about playing opera, the 20 operas we've done, is I think it seems like some composers made their best efforts when writing opera. And uh, it's some of the most expressive music that we play. Um, it's unique, I think, it's different than symphonic music in that it's so vocal and there's dialogue and there's plot. And it's so directly, you know, there's a, a human element of it that you don't always get with symphonic music. And it's, uh, the plot itself is usually very emotional and powerful and just tragedy. And you don't get that in symphonic music. So it requires a real uh, emotional uh, response to the music that isn't always the case in symphonic music. For us as an orchestra, since we don't do opera as a, a main staple, it's always exciting to break into that kind of level of emotion. Um, it's because it's so different. Unlike like most symphonic literature, or a lot of symphonic literature, uh, the cunning little vixen or an opera has a plot and, and characters and themes, and Janacek is just so um, marvelous and intelligent at, at creating atmospheres and having the music paint the picture of, uh, of what he's trying to create. For example, when the um, vixen is sort of surprised and when she, when, she, when she sort of first figures out that the male fox is, is interested in her um, and she's sort of wondering, am I really that beautiful? I, I, I guess I didn't know. Um, and there's a kind of melody that goes along with that, am I really beautiful? And the oboe has part of that. So here's the am I beautiful theme. Little, right? Little thing. But then he goes on to extend it and it works its way into various other instruments and so forth. Janacek sets uh, the music to uh, the plot in the end of the second act. He's a genius at this. Um, it's really amazing. Uh, the textures and the melodies. I don't. I really don't think there's. Um, I think this is some of Janacek's best music. Um, prior to the excerpt, which I'm about to play at the end of the second act, um, the owl and the jay are uh, gossiping. Um, I guess the owl is gossiping to the jay about seeing the vixen and um, the fox together. And where I'm going to play the excerpt, um, which illustrates this beautiful texture, is the vixen and the fox are crawling out of a burrow while squirrels and a hedgehog are gossiping. And the music just sounds very judgmental and that something's wrong. And that trill at the end, um, you know, in looking at the score, it seems that the, the, the vixen just sobs, is sobbing. Um, we later find out that the, the vixen um, is pregnant and she tells the fox that uh, she's pregnant and um, they decide to get married. Um, and so this is between this and the next excerpt that I'm about to play. Um, they go to the parson, who's a woodpecker, and ask him to uh, marry them, which he agrees to do. And this next ex excerpt just illustrates again the texture of the vixen and the fox getting married and kind of that nervous 
uh, nervous energy around any wedding. I'll um I'll get out my part and I'll um I'll go to my recording over here and I'll go to my Spotify. <laughs> Start that up. And then I'll just go through and I'll try and figure out how my part fits in with with all the rest. For example, I'm seeing that this part right here is with the violins, right? So I might just put in with violin. And then I'm trying to figure out tempo, right? And time changes and so forth. We go from 4-8 uh, to 2-8. It's not that big a deal, but just how, how does that work? So that's a little bit of the process. The biggest part of the preparation is definitely on stage in rehearsal. Um, the biggest challenge, I think, is the incredible concentration and flexibility that the whole orchestra has to have. Since we're functioning largely as an accompaniment, um, and we have no visual cues from the soloists, we're completely uh, dependent on Franz to give us the guidance and really be able to read the minds of the soloists oftentimes. And we have to read Franz's mind. And uh, uh, if fortunately he knows these operas so well inside and out that he can be free from the score and be able to go with soloists. And we sense that and we're able to be really responsive to that. That's really what makes him such a great opera conductor is that he knows the scores inside and out. So Franz is able to elicit from the orchestra a, a real sensitivity in terms of giving real flesh to the um, uh, to the text, right? So he's 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 extremely good at that, and and that's a kind of an infectious um, enthusiasm which 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 catches on. Mm -hmm. 